want to be that person in the picture. I think advertising restrictions will apply to recreational drugs in the same way that they apply now to tobacco products and possibly in the near future to alcohol. <laughs> what do legal say about this? Oh, we'll get away with it. Obviously, pharmaceutical companies will want to get around this because they're creating a new industry, a new business, a new marketplace. And I think that government will probably be receptive to this because why kill off a new industry? The internet orders were actually down 0.7%, so I got the ad guys to sex up some of the pop-ups. You know, advertising standards are coming down hard on web commercials. Well, we're feeding it through Indonesia. We're not going to go through UK. You're good, Carl. You're very good. Thanks. I'm not surprised that some people will try and get around the ban on direct-to-consumer advertising by using the internet. However, no self-respecting pharmaceutical company would allow this to happen. I'm impressed, Carl. I'll have a re-meet at six, okay? Okay, six o'clock. We need more time. Thanks. 24 hours. We are the book pavella cut him loose. What's that? That is what I think killed them. <sighs> Problem is, it's not anything illegal or anything licensed. Xana Clegg said they'd taken several drugs. Could they combine and form that? No, two drugs would only show us one drug if they were combined in a lab and then ingested. Deliberately? Well, it would have to be. What, can the computer search for that? Yep. <sighs> oh, shit. You sort the warrants. I'll see you there. National Crime Bureau. Thank you, Fiona. Inspector, you need either an appointment or a warrant. Yeah. About ten minutes ago, two High Court subpoenas hit your firewall. They cleared your fibre optic lines and they opened your mainframe to us. Your tech boy's alarms should be ringing about now. もしもし。いや、ここにいるよ。いや、大丈夫だ。いや、何か分かったら本社に連絡する。Don't just hate it when the other guys are right. Although we want to see the legalization of drugs, we recognize that there's a historical problem that the government's had in controlling the drugs industry as a whole. That includes alcohol, tobacco and pharmaceuticals. So what we'd like to see is far more regulation and control of those large companies in order to make legalization work. This is a molecular model for a drug we believe caused the death of both Tanya Williams and Josie Mills. And this is a licensed molecular model for an Amita Pharmaceuticals product, X4P. Yes, it's a cardiovascular drug we developed. There are no similarity. Well, on their own, no. But you recently put forward a base patent on a non-licensed drug, Dexclorazole. And if you combine X4P and Dexclorazole at a molecular level, you'll get... That'll make you feel euphoric one minute and give you heart failure the next. Who has access to these two drugs? 
And who would hand out unlicensed Amuta Farm products in nightclubs? So, I had some Amuda products. <laughs> what are you gonna do, charge me with theft? You had enough to medicate London. I said intent to supply. They're all legits. Available from any internet pharmacy. Christ. Any courier will deliver them to your door. What's your relationship with Mark Pavel? Pavel does some freelance research for me. What kind of research? He provides my department with an insight into the club scene. You know? Youth culture. Does that include handing out free drugs to clubbers so they'll buy your product? Your boss, Dr. Kadia, said your bonuses were based on sales. <laughs> Is there a point to this? These <laughs> girls die because of drugs handed out to them in a club a few days ago. Mark Pavel was in that club. I'm going to speak to my lawyer. That drug was a combination of a Muta Farm products. This is X4P. Now this, this is Dexclorazol. Impossible to purchase, and it was found at your residence. Now, this drug blended with X4P is what caused the death of both Tanya Williams and Josie Mills. Now, listen. Our industry is riddled with counterfeiting. Half the labs in India cook up billions of counterfeit pills. We're lucky if we can keep patents safe for uh, two months. Everybody with a chemistry set is having a go. Charge him. You're making a mistake. I can live with that. Counterfeiting will increase when recreational drugs are legalized. Counterfeiting drugs has been with us since the alchemists of the 13th century. It's been getting worse over the last decade. Between 7 and 10% of all drugs consumed in the world are now counterfeit. That equates to 20 to 30 billion pounds. Dealers would always be able to uh, undercut a legalised system because these commodities are cheap and uh, dealers wouldn't be paying any taxes of any sort. It's a black market economy. Uh, they will always undercut, as they do now in various commodities that we see on the streets. Counterfeited drugs won't be attractive under a legalised regime. Why would you go and buy that as opposed to something of provenance that's been overseen by off-drug? You'd be a fool to go and buy it from some dodgy bloke round the corner rather than a regulated outlet. Wherever you've got demand, you'll get somebody providing a product which imitates the genuine product. The example is the tobacco industry. 20% of the UK's tobacco is either smuggled or fake or both. Off-drug commissioner Richard Hardy found himself under fire today when he refused to release details about a possible break in the case surrounding the deaths of Tanya Williams and Josie Mills. In a joint investigation between Oxdrug and the National Crime Bureau, two people have been arrested and charged with offences relating to the deaths of two young women in London. Did a drug company kill Tanya and Josie? I have no further... The government continues to defend its policy on the legalisation of drugs. So, Parvel will rat out Gibson and Gibson will take down a motor farm. It'll take more than a few expensive lawyers to whitewash. 
of drug come out of it looking pretty good, huh? <laughs> now 